Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next example. We got to solve this limit at infinity here. Notice that it's pretty intense and we got to figure out which one of these four is that limit going to equal. So a couple things I want to mention. First off, highly doubt you're going to get something intense like this on your midterm, but thought I would include the question anyway. And my intention is, is that if we can get through something like this and you could understand what's going on, when you run into other limits at infinity questions and other mock midterms or in your assignments or on the actual midterm, it's going to be a lot easier for you. You're going to have more confidence to deal with it. Now, if you've gone through my limits at infinity lecture videos, then you should look at this and be a little bit intimidated, but not too intimidated because we've gone through complex stuff like this in the lecture videos. However, if you haven't gone through the lecture videos and then you just look at this, then you're probably going to be super intimidated. So before going over this, if you didn't go over the lecture videos, the limits at infinity section, highly recommend you do that first because I start off with the basics, with the fundamentals, and throughout the section, I work my way up into solving stuff like this. So I highly recommend you go through those videos first and then you're going to feel a lot better watching this video. Right? So let's uh, let's go. So notice that first thing to notice here is that these terms, like we got this third root of x to the power of 6 minus 3 and then we got the square root of 5x to the 4 plus 2. This here, because they're multiplying, we consider that one term right there, all right? And then we got this single term, 3x to the 4. And then notice all of this is multiplying. We got 4 times the third root of x to the 6 plus 4 times the square root of 2x to the 4 plus 3. All of that is one term. And then all of that is one term. So we got four terms we're working with. That's the first thing to realize here. So for example, if we had a more simple limit at infinity question, uh, not zero, but infinity, let's say that we had like uh, 5x to the 4 minus 3x squared over 6x minus 2x to the 4, right? This and this are the same format. One term minus one term, one term minus one term, one term minus the other term, right? And what would we do with something more simple like this? Well, we would have to divide everything by x to the power of the highest degree in the denominator. So notice the denominator, we have a degree of one, we got a degree of four, so we would divide everything by a degree of four. So we would take this divided by x to the four, x to the four, this x to the 4, this x to the 4. Notice this would end up being x to the 3. These would cancel out. This would be x to the 2 in the denominator, and then these would cancel out. And then this would go to 0, this would go to 0, and we would end up with negative 5 over 2. Right? That's the general sort of strategy that we use for limits at infinity, as I went over in the lecture videos. So we're going to be using that exact same strategy here. The problem here is that we first have to figure out what is that highest degree in the denominator. So notice that for this term, we have a degree of three, but over here, it's hard to tell what the degree is because we have this x to the six, but notice it's under a third root. We have this x to the four, but notice it's under a square root. So we gotta manipulate these a little bit. And then we gotta manipulate this term here as well because we're gonna be dividing by the highest degree. We're going to divide all the terms by the highest degree. So this term and this term. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to work with these square roots separately. So this third root of x to the 6 plus 4, if you remember from the lecture videos, what I did here was I first factored out within these roots x to the highest degree in the root. So notice that I'm going to take out an x to the 6. So I'd be left with 1 plus 4 over x to the 6, right? So this and this are the exact same thing. And the reason why you want to do that is because now we can take, now this third root, I'm going to actually change that to 1 over 3. So now what we can do, because these two things are multiplying, we could take x to the 6 to the power of 1 over 3, and then we could take 1 plus 4 over x to the 6 to the power of 1 over 3. 
And then notice this here is going to end up being an x squared, right? 6 times 1 over 3 is x to the power of 2. And then this is to the power of 1 over 3. I'm actually just going to leave that as the third root of 1 plus 4 over x to the 6, right? All we're really concerned about is this here. So what this means is that this expression is the exact same as this expression. And what's nice now is that we know what the degree of this expression is. The degree is 2, right? The third root of x to the 6. It's basically going to be the root of x to the highest degree under that root. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase this here. And instead of writing this, I'm going to write this here. So I'm going to have x squared, and then I'm going to have the third root of 1 plus 4 over x to the 6, like that. All right, so that could maybe be like your next line on your page. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing for everything else. So this square root of 2x to the 4 plus 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x to the 4 within the root. So we'd be left with what? 2 plus 3 over x to the 4. When we factor it out, everything gets divided by x to the 4, right? So from here, notice that we can split these up. And the square root of x to the 4 is going to be what? It's like x to the 4 to the power of 1 over 2, which is x squared. Okay, so this... Sorry, this wasn't here before. This term, this term, I took it and converted it to that. Both of them are the exact same thing. Right, so if I erase this here, and instead I'm going to put this, I'm going to have this uh, x squared square root of 2 plus 3 over x to the 4. And we still got this minus here. All right, and now stuff is looking a little better because what we know now, this entire term is going to have a degree of x to the 4. Notice this x squared, this x squared, if we multiply it, we're going to end up with x to the 4 and then we would just rewrite those roots. So I'm going to rewrite that in the next line, but just kind of telling you what we're doing here. Basically, we're trying to figure out what's the degree of this term here. And the fact that we got these x squares multiplying, it's going to be x to the 4. So the degree of that term, that original term that we had in the limit, is x to the 4. Right? And we're going to do the exact same thing here. And probably from here you can tell, like, the third root of x to the 6 is x to the 2. And then the square root of x to the 4 is x to the 2 again. So we know that that term is going to have a degree of 4 as well. But if we were to show the work, this, this third root, we would take out x to the 6. We'd be left with 1 minus 3 over x to the 6. Third root of x to the 6 is x squared. And then we'd have that third root of 1 minus 3 over x to the 6. Right, so this turns into that. And then this here, the square root, we could take out an x to the 4, and it would turn into that. And then the square root of x to the 4 is x squared, and then we'd have the square root of 5 plus 2 over x to the 4. Right, so this turns into this, and then this turns into that, and then notice that we can multiply x2 by x2, that would be x to the 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new line here, and we're going to have the limit as x approaches infinity, x to the 4, and then we're going to have the third root of 1 minus 3 over x to the 6, and we're going to have the square root of 5 plus 2 over x to the 4. And then we're going to have this minus 3x to the 4 still. And that's going to be all over um, 4x squared times x squared. That would be 4x to the 4. 
And then we're going to have the third root of 1 plus 4 over x to the 6. And then the square root of 2 plus 3 over x to the 4. Minus 5x to the 3. Right? So all of this is the exact same thing as this. And what's nice now is that for this term and this term, we know what the degrees are. It's x to the 4 here, x to the 4 here. So now we could look, what's the highest degree in the denominator? Well, it's x to the 4. We have an x to the 3 here, we have an x to the 4 there. So we got to divide everything by x to the 4. And so we would divide this by x to the 4. We would divide this by x to the 4, right? This whole term. Divide this by x to the 4. And then we're going to divide all of this by x to the 4. And so now what's going to happen? This and that are going to cancel out. 3x to the 4 over x to the 4. The x to the 4s would cancel out. We'd just be left with a minus 3 there. These x to the 4s cancel out. And then over here, x to, the x to the 3 over x to the 4, that would just end up being 5 over x, like that. And now what we can do, notice that what formats are left here is where we have a constant over x to the power of some kind of positive exponent. And we know the limit as x approaches infinity of this is going to equal 0, where this n is positive. And this could be plus or minus infinity. In this case, it's positive infinity. right? So now we can just sub in everything. Notice that this here is going to go to 0. This is going to go to 0. That's going to still be a minus 3. This is going to go to 0. This is going to go to 0. And then 5 over x, that's going to go to 0 as well. And so what do we end up having over here? So notice that we're going to have the third root of this 1 here. We got 1 minus 0 over, you know what, actually, let me, let's just rewrite uh, what we're going to end up having. We're going to have the third root of 1 minus 0 here, right? These canceled out. Then we're going to have the square root of 5 plus 0. And then these cancel out. We're just going to have a minus 3 there. This is going to be all over. These x to the 4s cancel out. We still have a 4 left up top. Uh, we're going to have the third root of 1 plus 0 there. And then we're going to have the square root of 2 plus 0. That's going to 0. And then we got a minus 0 at the end. All right? So all of this simplifies to all of that. So <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just rewrite this in a nicer format. So the third root of 1 is just 1. So we don't have to worry about that. Then we got the square root of 5 here. So that is not a smooth number. So we're just going to leave it as square root of 5 because notice all of these are in exact values. So then we got this minus 3 at the end. All over, we got the 4. Um, third root of 1 is just 1. Square root of 2 plus 0 is the square root of 2. And then we got the minus 0, so we don't have to write that either. So all of that simplifies to this right here. All right? So the limit as x approaches infinity of this crazy function is equal to this right here. Now, which one of these is this equal to? Well, notice we got root 5 minus 3 over 4 root 2. So it's not this one. So we know it's not going to be this one. Close to this one, notice we got root 5 minus 3 over 4 root 2, but here we got 4 root 2 minus 5, right? So it's not going to be this one. And then notice that these remaining ones are in a way different format than this one over here. However, that's the extra trick that I wanted to add in this question. Again, more likely than, um, or probably not, you're probably not going to end up getting something like this on your midterm, but thought I would throw it in anyway. Basically, what I'm going to show you is that this is actually equal 
to this because if you remember, you can rationalize this. So if we rationalize this numerator, because notice that here we have constants in the numerators and here we have a square root. So we've got to rationalize that numerator. And so what we would end up with is root five plus three over root five plus three, multiplying by the numerator's conjugate. Okay, so what's gonna happen here? Well, we know we just multiply the n, so root five times root five is five, negative three times positive three is minus nine, over four root two, I'm gonna keep these separate, and then I'm gonna have root five plus three. Okay, so this, this uh, answer that we got and this are the exact same thing because we're just taking this and multiplying it by one, but we're adding more to it. And so notice five minus nine, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be negative four. And then notice the four and the negative four are gonna cancel out. We're gonna be left with a negative one up top. And then what we could do, root two, we would distribute in the bracket. So we would end up with negative one over root two times root five is root 10. And then we got the three root two. And now, which one of these is it? Notice that it's C, right? So this and this are the exact same thing. I know you can't use a calculator, but if you wanted to check now while you're practicing, if you plug in this in your calculator, you'd get the exact same decimal as if you plug in that. Both of them are the same thing. We just have to rationalize this to get it into this format. So that's another trick that I wanted to throw in. All right, so the answer to this limit is this or that. Again, if you haven't watched the lecture videos, highly recommend you do. Go, I go over a bunch of examples, bunch of videos, and I start with the fundamental.